Hello everyone and welcome back to another food video on my channel. I almost said what I eat in a day, but this is what I eat in a weekend. So it's now Friday evening, I just got back from work and we are getting the pasta party started because I had the sudden and joyous realization that this weekend is going to be a pastelicious, pastaful one. So every single day I pretty much have plans to eat some kind of pasta-like substance. And the first one is actually going to be the most healthful. So we're gonna start off the weekend on a virtuous note and I'm going to show you how I make my chicken noodle soup, or in this case actually mostly turkey noodle soup. We're gonna be finishing it off with some tortellini together later after I go for a run to deserve some of this um, pasta deliciousness this weekend. So I'll show you all of my favorite ingredients to include in the broth. It's gonna cook for around three hours, so it's gonna be a little bit of a later dinner for me, but I don't mind that because I have quite a few things to do. I wanna go outside and enjoy some of this finally bring like weather in Vancouver and go for that run um, and so this is just gonna cook away while I do all of those things so let me show you what goes into my very favorite chicken noodle soup recipe so you will need the following so for my protein I have a turkey drumstick really affordable um, form of protein and it makes the soup really delicious and then underneath I do have a pack of chicken thighs as well because I wanted a little bit more meat because all of this is going to result in some lunches for next week as well, either that or some stock that I can freeze. I have my usual frozen rosemary. For herbs otherwise, I have parsley and cilantro, and then I've also got some bay leaves and some um, uh, cloves. <laughs> I have the label in French here, so I had to translate mentally. Um, and then I've got some apple cider vinegar, which really helps to break down all of the collagen in the bones and the skin and release it into the broth for goodness to keep you young forever. Um, and then I'm going to use about half of this celery, this leek, a parsnip, some carrots, these are really nice organic carrots, and an onion. And what I love is that I'm just gonna throw most of this in pretty much whole. I'm just gonna um, chop this off of the stem, chop the you know really um, hard part off of the leek, peel these guys because I find that you get more flavor in the soup if they're peeled, and toss everything into some hot water with a splash of this to get it going, and off we go for the next three hours little secret ingredient as well is a little piece of ginger. I'm just going to use this chunk. It's not going to give it like an Asian pho kind of flavor at all. It just really is, first of all, good for you and gives it just a nice little um, subtle zing that you can't quite put your finger on. And another one of those is actually the onion peel. So you can see, excuse this BB with your cuteness, um, I actually throw it in with the peel and I find somehow it gives it the broth an even better flavor and it also gives it a really nice golden color. I don't know if you can see but it's already starting to color. So good. Little bite of turkey, leek, carrot, and tortellini.
Hello everyone. So it is the happiest part of the day for me. It's pasta time and I had such a good early afternoon. I'm going to be having an early dinner because I'm headed to my friend's 30th birthday party and she told us all to come hungry, but I do want to meal prep a little bit. So I'm going to have like a reasonable bowl in my box of this so that I can still enjoy the food at the party. Plus I'm not actually going out for over two hours. So I'll be hungry again by the time I get there. <laughs> I'm hungry a lot and um, you guys saw my breakfast. It wasn't huge um, and I haven't really had anything else since then other than um, you did miss out on me eating some of these mango two of these um, mango pepper chocolate this is from a local um, chocolate called chocolatas and it's a rebel island and it is excellent so I had a quick little chocolatey break what is this we have sneaky intruder as always um, so I'm going to make one of my very favorite, like, top ten pastas, maybe top five, actually for sure top five, and I have a lot of favorite pastas in case you haven't realized it yet. This is arechiette with uh, broccoli di rabbit and sausage, very classic. I considered bringing out my Philips to make some fresh pasta with you guys, you, you know, like, is my ultimate favorite, but I do think that this particular pasta goes well with orecchiette. So I got not one, but two bunches of broccoli di rabe. So this is where we get healthy because for sure, like the proper traditional way of making it would be with only one bunch, but oh my gosh, the bitter scent of this. So this is a bitter green with a broccoli like taste is crack to me. I could totally eat it by itself with no pasta, but of course, pasta makes it better, it makes the world turn, so um, of course I'm going to be using some pasta, but I'm going to be using double the greens to make it, you know, a bit of a healthier lunch um, for during the week. And then I'm going to add some sausage. These are really, really good sausages. Um, it's from a place called Oyama on Gravel Island, so that's where I went to get all of these good things. I have one um, spicy Italian sausage. I can't remember exactly what's in this. It had some interesting herbs. I think it has marjoram. And then I have one mild Italian with roasted fennel, so it should really add that nice um, flavor into the actual sauce because the sauce is a very simple one um, it's essentially a pasta water sauce with olive oil and garlic and chili flakes so I'm gonna use about four cloves of garlic fry them up in some olive oil add the sausage add the bitter greens and essentially steam those for about maybe 10-15 minutes so this is a super quick meal to make um, which is ideal because I hope to get a little bit of work done before I head off to the party so let's get started Whoever suggested damp paper towel under the cutting board, you are officially my hero.
only I would eat pasta filled with garlic and garlicky sausage right before going to a party, but I'll brush my teeth, I promise. And anyone that is really in my life would know that I come complete with garlic because it's my favorite. All right, first bite. Mm. It's so good. Mm. The sausage is fatty, the, um, or pini or broccoli rabbit, whatever you want to call it, is bitter and fresh, and it's all just tied together with the pasta water and the parmesan. It is so good, so, so good. And it's got a little kick from all those chili flakes. All right, I'm gonna go eat this and watch the end of Ozark, and I will catch you guys a little bit later. So it's time to make Sunday night dinner and I'm so excited. So you guys saw my brunch earlier. I haven't had anything to eat since then because I've been filming for hours and I'm starving. Like there is no hunger like filming hunger and I know a lot of you won't make videos you won't understand. I really am ravenous so I'm having some leftover chicken noodle soup with the tortellini. Mmm. Which is so good. So this is going to fuel me for gnocchi making. We're going to use my grandmother's technique. I actually have a full super long video showing you every single step of the whole process that I filmed with my mom a couple years ago. I really like that video because we're together in it so it's really a fun one. So do refer to that one because this is going to be like, I'm just going to show you a few steps. What you need, um, I'm making a double batch. So for a single batch, you need two potatoes. For a double batch, you need four. You definitely want to use the russet potatoes because they have more starch in them. Then you need two egg yolks. I think I used to use the white and you can do that, but I find it comes together a little bit easier if you just use the yolks and you still get that richness from the egg. And then you just need some good quality flour. Um, obviously it'd be better to use double zero pasta flour, but I don't have any, so I'm just gonna use this um, white unbleached all-purpose flour from this local um, mill. And then I'm gonna serve it once they're made, and it's gonna take a while, hence the snack. Um, I'm going to serve it with a creamy pesto sauce with um, sautéed bell peppers in it. There's a restaurant in London, like in the UK, called Gaucho's that serves pesto. It's an Argentinian steakhouse, so it's really weird that they serve that. Um, but I absolutely fell in love with that combination. There's a lot of Italian people in Argentina, so it's not really that weird. Um, I think the bell peppers really complement pesto well, so if you want to try a new combination, I highly recommend that, and I'll show you how to make it. Um, except that I already have the pesto made because I freeze batches of it. So I'm just thawing some right now. I'll show you. Just in some water, I do these little baggies of pesto. The thing is with this gnocchi recipe is that it's not really a recipe at all because I'm not going to measure anything. Other than the two egg yolks and the four potatoes, you add as much flour as you need until you have a dough. And that is actually, like, I know it's annoying for those of you who are recipe oriented, but it really is a secret because if you add too much flour, your gnocchi are going to be very gummy. They'll be like the ones that you buy that are in those, you know, vacuum sealed packages that I just cannot eat. Or if you use too little and too much potato and you overwork your potatoes, you'll you'll get glue, basically, like a type of glue that will just stick to your hands. Um, so just slowly adding in the flour and not overworking the potato is the key. I am going to use a ricer. Now, my grandmother did not use one, but I do find that it's helpful in keeping the potato light and not overworking it. And you do want to use warm potatoes that have been boiled well, so they're very soft. Um, and so because they're kind of hot to the touch, it is nice to have a tool to work with them. So that's what I'm going to do once I finish eating my soup.
This is a good arm workout. You know how good you're gonna get at racquetball? I mean, it's gonna be insane. You're gonna smoke everybody. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I really enjoyed it both times that we did it. So this is the big moment. You just start mixing it in. This is quite a labor of love. I wouldn't say that it's like, practically have my face in the plate, um, that it's an everyday kind of activity, but it's definitely one filled with love. And I have big plans um, to impress with this gnocchi. Later on in the week, I'm gonna make gnocchi bolognese. Um, but for now, it's just me and this pesto version. I'm very excited. This has been such a wonderful weekend. I honestly cannot imagine a better weekend of food. It's a lot of simple food, but so satisfying. Um, very past delicious. They're so pillowy. So good, guys. You have to make this at some point. Wow, I don't make it often enough. I make it maybe once a year. Mm. Right. Well, this is my main course and my dessert. So that means this what I eat in a weekend is complete. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what your ideal delicious weekend of food would be. Like what would be the one staple item that you would want to have every day that weekend let me know in the comments below i'm genuinely curious you've definitely seen mine this weekend thank you so much for encouraging me to do more of these what i eat in a days i feel like i'm getting a clear message from you guys that you're enjoying them and i am too so let's keep going thank you so much for watching and i will see you in my next video